Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is Dr. Levi with your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Our show is about reminding you to be your best you. We want you to maximize your life by optimizing the strategies that you use to apply to have a phenomenal life. The goal here is to know and understand that your choices determine your life and you create your life. Now, with respect to health, well-being, and fitness, I want to tell you some things today that I believe will help you tremendously. And that is when it comes to exercise, I want to remind you that exercise is non-negotiable. We have to do this every day. When it comes to exercise as well as the food choices that you make, your body is only going to reflect what you eat and what you drink and what you smoke. Therefore, again, smoke less, drink less, eat more fruits, nuts, vegetables, and grains, and more importantly, you have to know why you're doing it. You're doing it because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of men and women in America, no matter what your race is. So why not make healthier choices? Why not choose the vegetables over the cakes, the cookies, the panaduce, the pies, all that stuff? There's, if you do it, there's going to be a price for it. So I want you to be healthy. So today, of course, is March 9th, 2016. It's a beautiful day here in Los Angeles. So I hope and believe that wherever you are, right here and right now, you're making it a good day by your choices. Now, when it comes to guests, we often have a lot of guests on our show who talk about their lives, who talk about where they've come from and why they do what they do. You know, today we're really blessed and fortunate to have with us an amazing guest, someone who really needs very little introduction. But I want to tell you this. He has made a difference in the world of television and radio by his choices to be someone who is really about being an advocate and a voice for the community. He is someone that when you look at him and look at his life, it's clear that by his choices coming from Mexicali, Baja, to here, that his family reminded him that, yes, Jose Luis Gonzalez, you can do this. If you dream it, if you believe it, and if you do the work, you can do it. So he's a star. He's an amazing man. And I'm grateful to have him on the show. So welcome, Jose Luis Gonzalez. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Uh, wow, very nice introduction, Dr. Levi. Absolutely. It's my pleasure being here, and especially that you open uh, your uh, mics uh, on your show to talk uh, with me. Absolutely. It's very good. Uh, well, um, first of all, uh, I, I I admire you. Oh, so, thank you, so, sir. So big. Same here. And uh, today during the, this interview, I would like you to give me some advices about my, you know, how can I eat better? Because, Definitely. you know, as a TV host and a producer, you know, all the time I'm running, flying yes, everywhere. Everywhere. And I'm, you know, very, I'm going to be very honest with you. Sometimes I'm eating a lot of junk food. Yes. Well, you look healthy. I'll oh, thank you. That. You look healthy. You look fit. But let me tell you, last year I had a, a surgery. I, I was uh, with a lot of pain. Uh, they took me to the doctors, and and they took me out the, the appendix. Where, where, oh, really? The appendix, yeah. Oh, you're and they, they very told, fortunate because they could have ruptured, yeah exploded you know? inside. Exactly. Yeah. So I want you to give me some advice before we leave the show because definitely. today we're gonna talk about everything. Anything, everything. Anything you want, my friend. Anything. Well, I really appreciate it. I'm yes. grateful that you're here, and I'm so happy that you're willing to actually have this real intense, profound, in-depth, profound conversation about your life and about yes. who you are and where you're from. Well, let me tell you. Um, first of all, I used to host one of the uh, high, highest rating shows in the U.S. Uh, this is Jose Luis in Censura. Yes. A lot of people saw this show on uh, the Straight TV and uh, I did it for almost 11 years. That started in 2004. That's right. Yes. yes. Uh, it never stopped. And, uh, you know, I was also the uh, the producer. Yes. So that's mean when I was looking into the topics, also I was hosting the show. Right. I was doing three shows per day. I start doing the first show around 6 p.m., second one around 9, and the very last one around 11. And we... We ended at uh, the third show around uh, 3, p 3 a.m. in the morning. That's a, that's a long day. It's a long day. And next day, I was at the office, you know, at 8 a.m. watching the topics for the next of course, recording show. Of course. As a producer, it's you a know, you need work. to be there. Yeah. So I was doing kind of two, uh, two, uh, two, two, two jobs at the right. same time. Right. And hosting everything. And hosting. You know, I want to talk about Censura, but I also want to ask you about your life as a child. Yes. Growing up in Baja, Mexicali. You know, I want to know, what was it like for you with your mom and dad? Do you have brothers and sisters? Yes. Was it a happy home? Oh, yes, yes. Let me tell you how to, uh, how to, how to was living my childhood. Yes. So I'm coming from a family in Mexico. It, this is in Mexicali. It is, you know, run uh, 
just crossing the border. In, exactly, in right across. Yeah, Baja. just Baja. Yeah. It's just uh, going here, you just co uh, cross Calexico, yes. which is still uh, uh, California. Of course. And then it's Mexicali. And I was living in the fields in Mexicali. It is a, a very good, uh, uh, he you know, healthy uh, environment to, yes. to put on, on, on earth, whatever you want to do. And, and uh, you know, my father had a, had, a, had a farm. Yes. And uh, he gave a job to a lot of people who was... Uh, and that time was in uh, working in the fields in the U.S. Yes, because in the past, uh, the U.S. government they were giving uh, like a, a social security to all those workers. Yes, and they were asking for help because in that time it was too many fields to be you know to work on it, and, right. and it was uh, not too many hands to work. See, on it. your dad was actually employing individuals to work with him on his farm. Yes, and and, and normally uh, in the U.S. they were. Uh, working for only six months yes and later they went bo go back to mexico but, but my father living on the, on, the, on the border he was giving during that period of time some jobs to these people on okay. his fields that was great that he did that yeah. what about your mother what was she doing my mother was taking care of my uh believe it or not of my uh seven sisters you're and the only son and my brother modesto oh, okay. like modesto california yes i'm modesto yes, his name yes. is modesto like my father and i have only one brother and seven sisters yes so pretty much my my home is based on a woman you of know of course uh, you know they were uh eight eight ladies behind me when right. i used to broke up with my girlfriend right they were oh my god she came crying with me <laughs> right, you're right. a bad boy right and then the next one the next one the next one <laughs> right. oh my god it was eight girls in behind <laughs> right. me. but you know what now I you could not win that battle but you know what uh and Living in that environment, and now I realize that uh, that uh, you know the woman is the best thing ever, you know, yes. because they they treat you well, absolutely, and and your producer is <laughs> yeah raising, raising her hand, hand. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yeah, Jose Luis, I'm your fan. Oh, thank yeah, you, yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> no, no, let's be honest. I mean, you know, and, and me living with with seven seven sisters and yes. then my mom. I mean, it was incredible. You know, I can do whatever I want to do, and at the end of the road, at the end of the day, they are gonna. Hug me, they're gonna say, Don't worry, Jose Luis, we're here. Right. It was great. I mean, you know, my sisters are the best. And also, my brother. My brother, right now, he supports me in my career. He's a really nice, honest man and yes. single. Yes. And, uh, well, you know, that's that's my family pretty much. Fantastic. So, life for you growing up was a happy time. Yes, in the fields and the, the farm, running with my dog, eating right. a lot of watermelons. Yes, yes, enjoying tomatoes. Life. Oh, yes, yes, I enjoy it. So let me tell you, uh, my father put a um, how do you call is it like the water coming out from the from irrigation the irrigation system? Yes, he he created that uh, in that on his farm. So I remember uh, the water very fresh, very clear. Me jumping in with my dog, and uh, it was my childhood was very good. Now when I had at uh, the moment to think about my future, yes, and and, and I was thinking. Uh, Okay, let me let me see myself in the next five years, and the next ten years, on the next twenty years. So when I was thinking about that, like a dreaming, uh, cool, awake, dreaming about your life, yeah. yes. And then uh, I realized that I want to be on television, believe it or not, because that little TV in the farm in Mexico, watching every comedy or cartoon shows, yes. I was amazed about how that how what that was incredible. But I was saying, how can I do television here, right. living in the farm? Right. So uh, when I finished my college, which as I was fifteen years old. Dr. Levi, I decided to move on because it was, uh, you know, the city, Mexico City, was about two days and two nights. Yes. Driving by bus. That's a lot. It's a lot. So one day I told my mom, Mom, um, I want to go to Mexico City. Now, what, what did she say? How did she look at you? You no, said that. She, well, <laughs> first of all, because, you know, because I was uh, so protected with all these wo beautiful women. Of course. And then, you know, I can do whatever I want. So I was thinking if I told her, if we're gonna tell that, uh, I believe she's gonna say yes. Yes. And she say, talk to your dad. Oh, I already did, mom. <laughs> Are you sure? And she look at my dad, and 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 my dad said yes. Uh, you know, he we what can we do with this guy right here? He wants to go. Yeah, he let, wants to let go. Him he get wants on to move on, let it go. <laughs> right. So believe it or not, my mom supported me, and she said, okay, Jose Luis, if you're gonna really go to that big city, 22 million people, yes. right here in the farm where like. Ten people. Very I mean, different. <laughs> I mean, and when when your father is uh, working in the fields, maybe it's uh, uh, twenty more people. Right. But uh, you know, it's, it's twenty two million people in, yes. in that city. Big deal. And I said, Doctor Levi, I, I said, you know what? I just want to go. And then she told me, Okay, Jose Luis, you told me two years ago that you want to be a doctor. Right. Yes, I want to be a doctor. Okay. Just promise me one thing: when you get to that city, you're gonna find an any university. 
that place right. that, that you promised me that you're going to be a doctor, so I want to see that, and I support you, whatever you're going to do. Right. I said, okay, done deal. So they were in your corner. Whatever you wanted, they yeah. were like, yes, they were your biggest cheerleaders. Yeah, but do something. Right. So uh, I remember that day, uh, and I still remember, it was so hard. Uh, my mom gave me some pesos, which yes. is uh, a couple, uh, you know, pesos mexicanos, right. uh, the Mexican pesos. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a couple of bills, and she told me, okay, Jose Luis, this money is going to be for you to spend during this trip. It's going to be two days, two nights. Right. You are on your own. But this money is going to give you for the next couple of months. So here is. And she opened my shirt, and she put that money inside, and she wrapped it up. Right. And said, okay, don't touch it. Don't tell nobody that you had your money right there inside of you. Just go away and, and you know, just call me as soon as you arrive. Right. And you were by yourself? And you were, yeah, you I was were 15, how old? You were 15, 16? 15 years old. That's a big deal. It was a big deal. But at that moment, I realized that uh, I wasn't a normal person. You know? Right, right, right. I was doing something. Because one, they trusted you. Mm -hmm. They believed you would do the right thing. That you were mature enough to actually go on your own and survive. Yes. That's a big deal it's at 15. Deal. Yeah, 15. It's a big deal at 30. Can you just imagine that? <laughs> right. So uh, uh, at that moment when I was inside the bus and I look into the window and, and I wave my hand to her, I saw in her eyes, Dr. Levi, uh, that she really, like, uh, she went down like 10 years. You really? know, she, she, that moment, she never cried in front of me. Right. She just said, go, do it, but I can hurt. You I, can feel the yeah, pain. I can feel the pain inside. Yes, yes, and, yes. And, I, and I was traveling Two days, two nights to Mexico City with that uh, look from yes, my mom. You remember that? Oh yes, and I was saying, you know, you know what? I need to do it. There is no go back. No, I, I cannot do that. Right. So I remember arriving to the big, huge bus uh, uh, station. Yes. And then everybody was on her, on her knees, uh, on her knees. Uh, right. And then it was a huge image of the, the Virgen de Guadalupe. Uh, yes, the Virgin. The Virgin uh, Maria. So they were under their knees saying, oh, thank you for this trip. I'm alive. I'm, it's, it was a safe. So I look around and say, okay, I'm going to wait my moment to everybody to leave this place. But can you just imagine 24-7, that place yes, never, never, never was empty. Yeah. Never, so never. I opened my space and I were on my knee uh, and I said, you know what, Virgin, Maria, uh, you gave me this the strength to come over from far away. Yes. Now please give me the strength to be alive yes. and do whatever I want to do. So I'm here. I'm your son. Um, you know, just give me that strength right now. I need it. So your faith really helped to uphold you to yes, continue with yes, your doctor. journey. Oh yes, doctor. Because, because uh, uh, what can you do in two days, two nights traveling in my bus, just thinking about your family? That's tough. And and it, I was just uh, living only 15 years. You know, right. I was 15 years old. What can what can no experience? experience. Yeah, yeah, you had no. What can experience in life? Nothing. So um, right away I started looking for an apartment right. with the money she gave me in my hand. I found a student apartment, like for yes, rental. Yes, yes. And then, yes, doctor, I, I found this nice, small place, little place that I was living um, for six months uh, with this nice family. I uh, was paying my rent. Right. And I was eating. And I was. What about working? Were you working, no, looking no, for no. a job, looking Not for school? Working, Not working, nothing. My mom was paying everything. Wow, what from an the farm. amazing mother. Yes, yes. And, uh, well, uh, then the first thing that I found, it was the, the university. Yes. I, I went there. I did my, my, um, my test. Yeah, and I, your and, registration. And, and, and no, it was the actual test. Test. The test. And they put the results on the, on the local newspaper. Wow. And I opened, and it was my name on it saying, you passed the test. You need to come over to this uh, room and, and do the rest. Wow. And I started going to, to, the cl to classes. That's the, fantastic. The first six months. But it was so difficult. It was so hard. I didn't knew that medicine. It was so hard because right. they start with uh, numbers. Yes. With yes. Uh, science. Division, science. And yes. for me, we're not going to be a, right. a musician right. 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 or right. whatever. It was so right. hard. But you know what? I, I, I decided. So um, one day I was reading the newspaper and they said a new opening for uh, – Acting in school in Televisa, you know, yeah, Televisa is yeah, the this, main the thing. Main, exactly, is right, the main thing. Right. I say, oh. So this is like a fine arts school, yeah. fine arts, fine arts class. Yes, it's, it was the best one. I say, oh my God, there is an audition. I should I go, and I did the first audition, second audition, third audition. When I was on the ninth audition, I was already inside the studios. Fantastic. And then I was in front of a lot of producers, TV producers, and then they say, okay, Jose Luis, now improvise a TV commercial in thirty seconds. Right. You have a couple products. Just choose anyone you wanted and do a TV commercial. Right. Live right now. Right. And then I did it. And then 
the the rest is history. They gave me the, the opportunity in acting school. Fantastic. They gave me a scholarship for three years. Wow. And then I continued studying medicine. But uh, let's be honest. Studying a medicine, it was hard. Of course. And, and acting, it was more. I because they that. gave me the books from Shakespeare. Uh, it was it was too much. Oh, it's a lot. It was a lot. So, Dr. Levi, at that moment, I des- I took my decision. Right. Which is was uh, continue, with, uh, which is, I believe... I love until now it's, it's entertainment. Yes, well, so that's your passion. Your passion mm-hmm, is passion. bringing forth authentic television, authentic radio, changing the lives of people through your voice and through your platform. You're doing that. Oh yes, thank you. So I decided to go uh, for the entertainment side, and then I left medicine. Yes. And then what I was bu- it like when you told your mother that you left? I, medicine? That's the I key. Hear oh, that. You're good because yes. I never told her. <laughs> in, the be- oh, really? in the beginning, of course not. Right. No, she's gonna get mad, and right. and then I never told her that I left the, the the school, the medicine school. So, but she smelled something. It was bad. So. Oh, they know. They always. Know. Oh, that was not. So, yes. so my mom told me, "Okay, Jose Luis, I'm gonna go see uh, see you next next month. Where, mom? To whatever, whatever, whatever you're you doing, are. Where <laughs> right. you are? I'm gonna go. Right. Right. I said, "Oh my God. Oh, okay, <laughs> just come over." Right. So I was ready to tell her when she arrived. I was ready to tell her the truth that yes. I wasn't going to the medicine school anymore. But she knew already. Of course they know. Yeah, they know. she told me, Dr. Levi, she told me, okay, Jose Luis, okay, do you think I, I didn't knew that you wasn't going to school? Of course I knew. So tell me, this is the real life you're going to take? Now show me and do it. And and I, 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 in that moment, she told me, oh, my God, my mom is my hero. Yes. I mean, she traveled all this, you know, because, I don't know, but that day she took the airplane. And I knew she was scared about the airplanes. She that's still came to see you. Yeah, then. but and that's why she she sent me on the on the on the bus the right. first time. Yeah, because she was so scared about the airplane. So, and I said, well, if she took the airplane and she came to see me here, and then is is because she really I do care, exactly. and she cares me. Yes, yeah, she does. She cares for you. And then of course, uh, uh, that moment she took me out of that small place that I was renting, and she took me to a bigger one. And then she told me, okay, just focus on this and, and move on in life, okay? Right. I'm going to support you 100%. And, and trust me, it's not, it's not that she was a businesswoman. Right. She wasn't a huge, uh, rich lady. She was just a but wife of the honest men working in the field. But she had a lot of wisdom and a yes. lot of common sense to help guide you. And, and you know what? That moment, because she was dealing with so many uh, da- daughters and, 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 and me and my brother, right. I thought I, I never cared. And, um, and I believe that she never loves me mm. in the beginning because she now was too many. Know. Now I know. Oh, yeah. And every single moment of my life, whenever she gave me in, in, anything about, Jose Luis, don't do this, and I don't going to buy you this because later you're going to need this money. Trust me, Jose Luis. Exactly. And guess what? Of when I was course. needing the money because I want to eat in that big city, right. she sent me the money, and she told me, Jose Luis, remember when I, when I told you that I was saving this money for this moment? This is the moment. Absolutely. Now, I want to know, what about your father? What was he thinking when he found out, or what did he share with you when he found out you weren't doing medical school and doing acting and fine arts? No, actually, he was surprised in the beginning, but later he was okay. And he told me, okay, Jose Luis, if you if you're not going to do whatever you believe you're going to do, just come over. In the fields, you have a huge uh, space. You, you can help job, me out. Right. I said, no, thank you, Daddy. No, thanks, Daddy. <laughs> you're okay. There. But you know what? It. Actually, I really enjoy being in the fields because uh, those days, it was never going to come back. But in that story, let's go back later to, to the to the fields because it happened v- something very, very hard that uh, break down the whole family. Yes. So I'm going to tell you I that wanna, later. I want to hear But let me that. finish first with sure. the Mexico City. So Mexico City, when I was in, in Televisa, I was taking dancing classes, singing classes, acting classes, writing classes, anything about entertainment business. You were doing it. Oh, yes, I was doing it. But one person told me, Jose Luis, you know what? I believe you are in Televisa school. That was It's kind of for rich people. You are not doing that <laughs> in the right way. What do you mean? Right. No, there's better schools outside, like... Uh, a school from from uh, universities, a school from the actual real actors. Right. They have their own independent schools, and they're the best teachers. I said, right. really? So I started investigating here and there, and guess what? I found another school. So I was going at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. from one acting school. Yes. And at 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. to a second uh, acting school. Well, that was a so lot. So in three time. years, I took uh, two schools, acting schools. That's very intense. And it was it's very intense. And over the weekend, I was inside a play, a musical play. I was dancing, singing every Sunday. Wow. So I never stopped. Never stopped at all. 
So I, I finished my three my three years in Mexico City, and that's the moment that you take your resume, your pictures, and you start putting it on every single producer door. Yeah, you want to start working. Yeah, and they call you for to do soap operas, right. TV commercials, and whatever. So that day, I remember, okay, I said, my family is in the U.S. or in Mexico, between there. Okay. So what should I do? Well, okay, you know what? Let me take a break. So guess what? I took uh, the shaver, and I... Shave my head. Here? Yeah, everything. Really? And I said, I'm going to start from zero. <laughs> right. At that age, I was around, I would say, as, uh, oh, close to 19, 18, yes. 19, around there. So I come over to, to, the, to, the, to, to Los Angeles right here, and that's when everything started. Yeah, what about this? How, why did you choose Los Angeles? Because you knew that this is the hub of well, entertainment? Be, be, no, because my sister was living right here. Oh, so it was easy. She, yeah, yes. my, sister, my oldest sister was living right here in, the, in, in Los Angeles. So um, now, one other question I have for yes. you: what, what did Modesto and your sisters think about your choice to be in entertainment? That I was crazy. Did the they really? Yeah. Did, they, did they tell you that? Yeah, they told me they were crazy. <laughs> and you know what? Actually, until now, when I have like a, spre- a special presentation, an award, or Los Angeles, uh, City of Los Angeles, give me a recognition, or I put my my hands. Uh, because I have a couple of stars around it, not oh. yet in Hollywood. But it's but coming. Small, it's coming. S- small cities, they gave me yes. their... And to me, it was nice. They don't have this thing. Right. And they gave me the hands and, and, and their cities. And exactly. to me, it was nice. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. For me, it's bigger than that. Right. Until right. I feel something in Hollywood, I'm going to tell you oh, that. it's going to happen. But for now, yeah, it's gonna for happen me, it's the greatest you. thing that right. people in, in the small town give you that. Okay. So when I came into Los Angeles, Dr. Levi... Uh, I said, you know what? Uh, what should I do? Okay, I did three years in acting, singing. Yes. My my Spanish is perfect, but my English is not. Oh, your English this, is great. Well, right it's, now I'm learning. Right, right. Uh, but uh, I said, you know, what should I do? And then I was on my sister's house, and I was just watching television every day. And she told me, okay, you know what? Stop. Stop right there. What you going to do in your life? Right. And especially, like, you look like Cholo, like a gang member. Oh, she said that Chavis. to you. Yeah, she told me Really? That. And I said, no, no, I'm just going to be an actor. <laughs> really right. like that, Jose Luis? Really? And I said, you know what? Just give me a couple more days and I leave your house and just, you know, I'll be okay. Right, right. No, actually, right now, you're going to be with me and let's go to this uh, temporary, uh, they find your job, how do you call it? Oh, yeah, temp like agency. agency. A temp agency, yeah. yes. So she took me there right away in that moment. I filled out the application and guess what? She got the job. And two hours later, they called me, <laughs> and I was working in a factory. So my first job in the U.S., it, it was in a factory. So the factory was about uh, making the, the paper boxes. Yes, and exactly car- talking about the, cardboard boxes. Cardboard, yeah. Yes. So it was very, um, how can I tell you? It was an easy job, but at the end of the day, it was very hard because you never you never take any break. Because re- just remember, I don't know if you see on the freeways when what is a huge truck with those roll of papers. Well, I've seen those, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know you're talking so about. So now, just imagine, because the the, car, the the board is is made about one at the top, one in the middle. Right. And corrugated. one under. And right. corrugated, but also the glue inside. Right. So just imagine going that huge Sheets. piece of, yeah, heat it was in front of your face. Oh, and I was only 18 years old. Not a they joke. They would pay me good for an hour. Oh, I believe that. Still I was a lot of pay- work. I was paying, I was paying. Paid in that time around nine dollars. That's a lot. I'm talking to you about 2000, 1999. Yeah, around that's yeah. a lot. It was a lot yes. for me. I was so happy. So uh, I, s- I was watching television, and then I, I saw channel channel 22 KWHY TV. Yes. In the pa- in the back, it used to be the business channel. Remember the hostess and, and all the market. Of course. Down there, yeah. Yes. That was it. So I saw channel 22, but after 3 p.m., it was in Spanish. Yes. Oh, I said, okay, so this could be the one. So I called them, and I said, hi, uh, can I talk to somebody who speaks Spanish, but also I would like to present a TV show idea? And I said, okay, you're talking with Eddie Dominguez. I'm, I'm the guy in charge of this uh, television, but we don't produce any Spanish show. We just, you know, this is the business channel. Right. And I said, no, I would like to to present my show because after three, I know you have Spanish programming. Right. Yeah, Jose Luis, but that one comes from Televisa. It's, 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 they rented the, the sign. They rented, yeah, yes, yes. And yes. I said, but, well, but what's your show about? And I said, well, the show, it's about, uh, it's a talk show. It's hosted by uh, teenage people and it's focused on, on, on teenage uh, guys and, and people. You know, it's like a, a, a guys from school, students coming into the show and then they're going to ask about drugs, about... They talk about real life yeah, issues real life. with teenagers, yes. Yeah, yes. and at the end of the road, I said in Spanish, es un show de jóvenes para jóvenes. It's a show about from 
jump people to young people, right. something like that. Yes. And then Dan Dill said, no, we don't have the space, we don't have the time. A month later, Dr. Levi, I was in this factory working, you know, like I told you, never stopping right. eight hours. And I was reading the newspaper and watching the, the, the thing coming out out of, out of the machine. And I was reading the newspaper and suddenly on entertainment uh, side, I read Eddie Dominguez, Eduardo Dominguez is making the new auditions for the new TV show, Para Jóvenes. <laughs> Say, wait, wait a minute. A that, that, was, said, that was my idea. Well, I, I right. didn't say that, but at least... You were thinking but, it. But I said, well, at least this guy is open a new opportunity. Absolutely. And I believe I can get it. Right. So guess what? I went there and I did the audition. Yes. And I got the, the, the part. Fantastic. So I remember his, um, his assistant coming into a small office and she told me, okay, Jose, you got the part, but uh, Eddie Dominguez doesn't, wanna, doesn't want any problem. And I said, why? He, she's telling me that. <laughs> but I said, oh, because he, he knows that I'm the one who talked to oh, him absolutely before. back then on the phone. Right. And I said, don't worry. I'm more than happy for no, you guys no, to no, give no, me was the was he happy? Was he happy that he you was were very there happy. happy that you were yeah. bringing? This was new energy. This was new entertainment. He was very happy. And not, not only that, I mean, he he gave me the chance to, to host the show. And it's I a was, big deal. It was a big deal. Um, you're 19 years old. And I, getting to 19 years old, right. you're right. And I was so happy hosting the show. And, and of course, I learned how to produce shows. Right. That's when I started producing right. shows. But you really were able to hone your skills mm -hmm. as a host, as a producer, as someone has to think about how to do this. Yes. And let me tell you, when I was um, working at the factory, I continued going uh, um, to the factory from 6 a.m. to 2 a p.m. And at 3.30 p.m., I start working on the TV station as a, as a freelance. Still, everything for you is always back yes. to back. Have you noticed that? It's back to back. It's nonstop work. But let me tell you, one time I remember that this guy in the factory came to me and told me, Jose Luis, how come you just came in from Mexico and you have a TV show? And me, as a singer, I've been here almost 20 years. I never got the chance. Right. And I said, well, I don't know. It's, it's just life is like that. So he started pushing me, but when I tell you, Dr. Levi, pushing, he started pushing me. Really? And that, now I know it, it's bullying. Yes, yes, but yes. But that time I didn't know, and I said, why he's pushing me? Why, when I'm in the mess room, he's threw me water in my face. Really? Why, when I'm eating by myself on, on the kitchen area, he threw my food on, on the floor? Oh, yeah, why yes, this, yes. why that? And I didn't know. I thought I was, maybe I don't like the guy, and that's it. But now I know it was bullying. It was bullying. It definitely, was bullying. Definitely. N now, Dr. Levi, uh, it, he that never stopped right there. Never stopped. No, come something, something hotter. Um, because at that moment, I didn't have my pap papers and, 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 you know, the, the right papers. Yes. You know, like everybody came to yeah, the Yeah, yeah, you're working day. on that. Yeah. Yes. I was working on it. So he went to my supervisors and told them that Jose Luis doesn't has the actual uh, green, green, green card. Green card. He's working on his uh, work permit, but he's not available to work right now. And guess what? They fired me on Did the spot. Did they really? Yeah, they gave me two checks, one from vacation, one from that moment, and from that week that I worked. And then I took th those two checks, and I remember walking in the middle of, I feel like, you know, like uh, the, the Romans, yeah, like when the they're on the side and you're walking in the middle, yeah, you yeah. lost or you win. Yes. I was in the middle walking, but this time I feel the same. But I was with my two chicks and crying yes. because I felt so bad because yes. this guy just told them that I have that I don't have any paperwork yet, and then and then he was laughing. So he was laughing. He was laughing. Now from that from that extraordinarily hurtful, terrible situation, how did you rise up and have the strength to go forward with Club Juvenile? How did how did that happen? Then? Well, uh, when when I was doing Para Jóvenes, I did it for two years. And then I remember that um, when I when I tell people this story, and they they say, "Jose, you should have write a book or 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 a or movie." A blog, yeah. But this movie. is the best part. That listen. So uh, when I I finished doing Club Juvenil, well, when I was fired in, from the factory, right? Remember, I was working on the shows on the entertainment business as a freelance for fun for hobby. Mm -hmm. They didn't pay me well. Right. They, I was just they doing pay the as show. an intern. I said intern and right. do the show we pay right. you or whatever. Right. And then okay. Oh actually I remember they were paying me 375 per hour that moment. That moment. Yes. 375 yes. per per hour. And then uh, I said well, okay if they pay me 4 hours per day, you know, it's it's okay. Because I was working the factory and right. remember, the other job. I was making $9 right. or exactly. something more than that. Right. Plus overtime. Well, then uh, when when I was fired in the factory, 
so instead of being uh, under entertainment business as a hobby, it took like a real job. Yeah. And I said, okay, now I know how to do it. Now I need to eat. I need to pay so the rent. Focused. I need to focus. And by the time I was living still with my sister right. in Los Angeles. Thank God for her. Yes. And then um, and I said, you know what? What should I do right now? Okay, I'm going gonna, I gonna to write another show idea, uh, Club Juvenil, and then I'm going to present it to Eddie Dominguez. And, and then, and then um, and as I decide to take uh, just, just uh, like a little paper. You know, I, I write down this story, and I talk to Eddie Dominguez. Say, hey, Eddie, can you please uh, do this show? Because I know we're not going to do any more uh, Club Juvenil. I'm sorry, Para Jóvenes, but we can do Club Juvenil. Right. I said, no, that show is not good. Uh, forget about it. Uh, you know, it's okay. Then, I one day I remember it was raining. Yes, and I took the I did the whole how do you say it? like a small stage with a little seating area where the mics are, the cameras where the people is sitting, everything like everything a small, like a setup, a like, setup like, a like a stage, stage. Yeah, like yeah. a little stage. Right. So I was there since eight a.m. in the morning at the lobby waiting for him. Five p.m. raining, and then Cherry, I still remember her name, Cherry, the 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 uh, the lady told me, Jose, you know what? And she told me. Honey, you know what? I don't think he's gonna come over. <laughs> Honey, you know what? I think he's gonna he's gonna forget about you. And I said, Cherry, right. don't tell me that. Right, right. I've been waiting here almost since right. the morning right, right, with please. this thing. I don't get you know. Right. How come? And she told me, Honey, it's gonna start raining. You should take my umbrella and go find the guy. Right. And I right. said, Okay, Cherry, thank you very much. And she right. gave me her umbrella. Did she really? Running. Yeah, she gave me her umbrella. I started running at the back, you know, covering myself with yes. it from the water and my small uh, project, right. I would say. Right. And then I knocked the door from, from this person's uh, window and right. said, Hey, this is the show that I told you about. And he rolled over down to his window and said, I told you it's not good, and I gotta go. It's raining. Can you see that it's raining? I gotta go. <laughs> right. And he left. Did he really? He left. He never saw it. So and he never saw it. And this is like a the small scene in the movie when when the actual they take you from out of up there and the car run away and you start like in the middle of nowhere. You're in the middle of that scene. Yeah, in real that life. scene. <laughs> and then the the paper start coming down, the pain with the water. Oh, and, I, man. and again, I start crying. Oh my I god. Said, oh my god. What, what should that? I do? What should I <laughs> right, do? Right. Right. And then I went back home. When I was trying to give to, to, to Cherry her umbrella, she already went. So she was she gone too. Left. She already <laughs> gone. I was by myself in the, in in the, the TV rain, station. Crying on Friday. The, on on the Friday. Friday. <laughs> and raining. What a way to start the weekend. And actually it was right here. And, and Sunset oh, Boulevard. Oh, it was close? Yes. Yeah, Sunset yes. Boulevard. Channel 22 used yes. to be right here. Channel, uh, Sunset Boulevard and like a two blocks down oh, there. Oh, my goodness. Close man. by. Right. Okay, so I was there and uh, I decided, what should I do at this moment? Do you know what? I believe Club Juvenil is a good show. Yes. Well, and then I put, put I put it on paper with my small English at that time. I got it down the idea, and I went to Universal Studios. That opened the door. It's coming. Wow, well, it's yes, coming the story. Yes, yes, So I remember that I knocked the door, and I say, okay, wh what is the owner of Universal Studios Hollywood? What do you mean? This is a, <laughs> this is a corporation. Studio. This is right. a corporation. <laughs> right. I want to do this show. Well, okay, if you want to do your show, you got to rent the studios. This right. is a TV studios. And I said, no, but I want to present my idea. I want you guys to do my show. Yes. And they said, are you crazy? We don't do shows, especially in Spanish, in oh, Espanol. Right. Who are you? And I said, well, I'm Jose Luis, but I want to do my show right here. Yes. And I said, you know what? Go to the second floor on City Walk, on Ca Camacho's Cantina. Right, and exactly. It's, yes. It's, it's right yes, there, yes. The, the main offices. And I said, okay, I'm going to go there. You don't know what I'm talking about. So I went there, and I said, okay, who's who's the manager here? Or, or, <laughs> who do who I, speak I speak to? to? Right. I said, this guy right here, John. Okay, John, uh, this is my show idea, and I want, you know what? Leave your idea with her, and we're gonna call you. And that was it. Nothing but else. I was so naive in that moment that I was sure that they're gonna call me. Yes. And guess what? Two weeks they called me. Yes. They, they. I remember walking uh, to the second floor in that offices, and John told me, Jose Luis, this is my team, this is the people, and we're gonna do your show. We Just really like, like your, your show idea, Club Juvenil. And when I do it, uh, he's the in charge of the uh, par, uh, team park. Go find the, the stage, and let's see let's see which one do you like. Wow! But for me, it was so easy. It was like a, it's gonna happen. Yeah, you, know? you just felt you knew it. Yeah, I knew it right. because I was so naive. I right. was I was only nineteen years old. Right. Come on, right? And, we and still believed in yourself yeah, and in yeah. your dream. And at that moment, um, uh, when I was driven in this little golf cart, and they were stopping like uh, the actual. Uh, you know, little tra tracks yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. down I know exactly there. Exactly what you mean. Yes, yes, yes. They, they, they were. Uh, we were driving inside the 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 producer's lot, and he was telling me everything. 
And he told me, Jose Luis, uh, you know what? Let me tell you, we never give this opportunity to nobody. Right. I don't know why we're doing this until now, <laughs> but you know what? I'm so happy because you are different. You are, you are, you know, you are Hispanic. You are Latino, and you deserve this chance. And Absolutely. you are 19 years old. Yeah. My God, and you're gonna be hosting and producing it. Yes. You're crazy, man. Come over. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's go find your 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 stage. Right. And then I I found uh, the back then it was a huge stage where they used to do um, uh, the barbarian. Uh, how do you call that? The, uh, the barbarian. Uh, Conan TV the show, Conan Con barbarian. Yeah, it was yes. a show right there. Yes. I said I like this stage, and I said, well, this stage is kind of dark. You need to uh, bring a lot of light. I said, what do you mean? I need to bring a lot of light. You're not putting the light. No, Jose Luis. We're giving you the space. We're giving you the name, Universal Studios. We're giving you everything, right. but you need to bring your own uh, equipment. Right. What do you mean? Yeah. I mean, we're going to give you everything, but you need to bring your... You are the producer, no? I said, yes. Well, bring your own equipment. That's so a big deal. I, I'm telling you, if you're choosing this stage, you need to bring at least $10,000 in lighting. I said ten thousand dollars. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, right. No, let's move on then. <laughs> right, let's get another stage. Quickly. And then we find another stage, <laughs> right. which is uh, which is was uh, uh, in house a stage. Yes. And then I I said you know I like this one. Done deal. If you like this one, let's do your show right here. And it was the Wild Wild West something. Right. The, the show right there <laughs> they used to do. So um, they gave me only thirty days. So. As soon as I, I wow. left the building, I started calling all my friends that I knew from these uh, little years. Can you do camera this day? I have only $100. Right. Sure, why not? Let's, 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 let's do it. I'll help you out, Jose Luis. So wow. at the end of the road, Dr. Lava, Levi, it was almost 35 people on board. Really? Yes. For your team to really support My team so, supporting me, believing me, and giving me the chance that they trust me and about this new... Wow. Because I believe they saw in my eyes that I really want to do you it. You have this passion for life, yes. a passion to make it really yes, happen. Yes, 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 and and of course I was so happy to do it. And then I remember that day when I came in with my three changes to do three shows in the morning, six a.m. I I saw the huge billboards everywhere saying Jose Luis with Club Juvenil at three p.m., six p.m., and nine p.m. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought it was like an independent, private production. Right. I can do a lot of mistakes or right. whatever. <laughs> no, it was part of the shows. Right. So that day you were in any show and you said, wait a minute, what can we do right now? Oh, let's go to, to this stage. Exactly there is a live right. show. Right. And I was part of the entertainment that day. That's real. It's, it's a real job mm -hmm. on a real stage. Yes. And you have to really produce. <laughs> and I was recording that show, Dr. Right. Levi. Right. So... Um, I start doing the first show, and I remember I was so nervous. I was screaming inside of myself. I was, <laughs> right. I was watching every single camera, and right. I was, and I remember my co-hostess. She, she told me my co-hostess. She said, "Jose Luis, don't worry, relax, enjoy the day. Exactly. You made it. We're here. Yes. Thanks to you, all these people is right here. Right. And I said, okay, thank you, Janela. Her name is Janela. Okay, Janela. She's from Ecuador. Yes." And she told me, Jose Luis, just enjoy the day. Okay. And she took me from my hand. Yes. And they walk out out of the stage. And everybody start clapping. clapping yes. And the lights come out and the R show begin. Right. So that was my, the, the Club Juvenil. Yes. I did it in, 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 in Universal Studio Hollywood. Can you, you were 19. It? It's fantastic. And I was 19 years yes. old. Yes. Yes. And after that. It was a very popular show also. Oh, yes. Yes. And of course, Dr. Levi, I took the show. The first show, I edited it very nice, you know, with a lot of special effects. Right. Louis third, the music. Bump out, bump in, yeah. everything. So I took it to Eddie Dominguez. I said, can I see you, Doc, uh, Eddie Dominguez? I said, sure. Uh, yeah, why not? So he put the show. And he saw it. And he saw it. And he went down and said, oh, you did it. Did he really? <laughs> he said that. Did he really? <laughs> oh, yes. He said that. He used uh, those big oh, letters. Oh, those big words. Those big, words. those big F words. He said, yeah. you did it. Right. And I say, I told you it's a wish show. I was show. gonna do it. Yes. And you didn't want to do it right here in your small studio. And now <laughs> Universal Studio did it for, right. for me. And and that day I woke up with. Uh, was he very proud and happy for you? I hope so. I I, I <laughs> yes. help, yeah, I hope so. So at that moment I woke up with a contract, signed yes. a contract. He That's gave me a contract fantastic. for six months. Wow. And I wow. put the show on the air. 
it's phenomenal. Yeah. But it shows you that you you have this one, you have this incredible work ethic, but more important, you have these dreams. And mm -hmm. your dreams are not to be minimized and not to be qualified or thought of less than. You're saying, I have an idea, I'm going to do the work, I'm going to make it happen, and I'm going to have an amazing life. And you're doing it. It's really fantastic. It was really fantastic. What were your parents thinking when you when you shared this with them? No this is a big deal. It was a big deal. But I believe, uh, A, maybe I talked to them in English and with my broken English in that time they didn't they didn't understand what I was saying <laughs> because you know it was a big thing what I oh, did yes it's a big deal and and then and then uh they say okay oh, what else but uh how much they're paying you <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> forget about how much they're paying me right. just you just know I just did it I mean yes. I'm in Hollywood absolutely and I opened my my own doors you know it was it was kind of huge for that and that time so after that and I start producing uh talk shows for Telemundo right they hired me to do a talk show called El y Ella. El y Ella was like a him and she. Something yeah, he like and she. He yes. and she. Something like that. And I was one of the producers. But back then, back then uh, the, the cases were so hard because it was, it was uh, cases from, from real people in, in real, real, real situations. Real situations. And can you just imagine bringing the lover the wife and this and that a lot of drama it was a lot of not only drama on the show but a lot of drama okay if, if i go uh, that lady's gonna be there i don't want to see her oh and, yes and don't worry you're gonna be in one room she's gonna be in a different room yeah. and you were the producer bringing those people that could be very intense yes and they were intense so i learned how to produce shows right in that moment well how did you go from there to estrella Oh, okay. With the Lieberman Network, because that that's a that's a very different jump. Oh now. yes, yes, yes. So when I I was producing for Telemundo, different talk shows, and then I said, do you know what? I gonna do another talk show. This is the moment that I come back to television because I have my own my my own ideas now. And you have your own following too. Yes, I mean, they and that moment you. they start growing up little by little. Right. So I create another talk show called um, in English is something like Who's Right. Yes. In Spanish is Quién Tiene La Razón. So who's right? I did that show, and it was very simple. I remember a couple of friends; they were already producing of their own um, production company, and they I come out one day and I said, "Guys, this Saturday, are you using your studio?" And they say, "No, we're not using it. Can I do a little pilot of my new talk show?" And they say, "Sure. I mean, yeah, I guess you can use it. Yeah, sure. Why not?" Right. And then, uh, and they said, "But you need a stage or what?" No, actually, I don't need any stage. Just the the seating area. And the camera is going to be facing them. Instead of being like this, they're going to so be them. against them. Yes. I mean, facing them. Right. I said, are you sure? Jose? Said, yeah, it's very easy show. Don't worry. So we started looking for the host and my friend who allowed me to, to shoot the show. And he told me, Jose, Liz, why don't you host the show? You know how to do it. What are exactly. you looking for another? Right. Because I'm too young. Well, whatever. Just do it. You have the experience. Mm -hmm. So I did the, 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 the pilot uh, on my own. And then we presented to the TV station on Channel 22, yes. but with different uh, directors and everything. And they choose it. They say, okay, we're going to do uh, Quien Tiene La Razón, Who's Right? And I did it for almost three years, three years and a half. That was a great experience. It was also. great. But the problem was one day when I was uh, in makeup room and thinking of with reading my cards and ready to go to the show and memorizing everything, right. somebody came to my back and said, Jose Luis, you got to go on the exit door. I said, Why? Because the new host is here. What do you mean the new host? This is my show. Right. And they say, no, host is because uh, the TV station asks us for someone uh, older. Really? You are too young and hosting a, a talk show. But I've been doing it for the last three and a half years. Right. I mean, why? And this is my show. We don't have any contract. Sorry. But uh, you need to go now. And I say, wow, okay. So they actually fired you? Kind of fired me. Uh, but you were, the, you were the creator of the show. Yeah, but we didn't get any contract in writing. Oh. It was, everything was verbal, Dr. Oh, Levi. Verbal in Hollywood is and never a match. No, forget mm -hmm. about it. If it's not on paper, it, no. it does, didn't exist. I remember in my car taking all the makeup with my hands and crying at the same time. Oh, I had the course. third time crying in the, in, in the <laughs> yes, for exactly. in the entertainment business. <laughs> right, right. And then I said, forget about it. I don't going to do it anymore. And right. I'm, I'm done with this. And suddenly they call me back like a three weeks later saying, Jose Luis, you need to go back. The ratings were to the floor mm -hmm. with this person, and uh, I need you back. But you need to give me a, 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 contract. a contract. If Absolutely. not, I'm sorry. Absolutely. I'm not going to do it. So we were in the middle like a yes or no going back and forth. Right. And suddenly 
I opened my first production company. I was doing a couple of TV commercials for clients because I knew all about the business and, and helping n small customers, new clients. So I decided to help them, creating their, their own advertising campaigns. Yes. And then I was, I remember that day at the Straya TV. This is Channel 62 KRCA. Right. I was running and I was stopped by one of the man managers. I said, Jose Luis, are you on Channel 22 or, or what are you? I know you're bringing clients to the station, but. Right. But I said, no, no, I'm right now just working with my agency and I'm working as an independent production company. Right. And they told me, because right now uh, we just bought uh, these studios and uh, I believe we have something for you. Fantastic. And I say, okay, well, what would you do? Well, can you come over this Friday for a meeting with the owner of the company? I said, yeah, sure, why not? So then I was there uh, the following Friday, and we met all together. Now, you actually met with Leonard Lieberman? Yes, Leonard Lieberman, yes. and then Don Jose Lieberman, his oh, father. So both, the father and son. Yes, they were there that day. And then we, we uh, the Leonard Lieberman asked me, can you walk around and see if you can do a show right here with us? And then Ivan Stokovic, they talked me around. And I was walking around, and, and he showed me the facilities. Yes. I said, yes, I can do a talk show right here. Good, because we want to do a talk show with you. It's fantastic. And I said, if you want to do it, you need to give me a contract. Oh, always. Don't worry. Always. I'm good doing contracts. You know the deal. Yes. He's a lawyer, you know. Right. <laughs> That's true, too. And then he gave me a very good contract for seven years. In, and the funny part is when these people in Telemundo and 22, they 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 found that I was now on Estrella TV. Right. They said, no, nah, don't go with Estrella TV. They're new in the business. They don't know how to do it. Uh, they don't have. They don't gonna give you support. Right. Forget you gotta stay with us. And I said, you know what? They give me a contract. They give me respect. Yes, they did. And the most important, they put the show Jose Luis. The show has right. my name. Right. So that thing is more important than anything in the whole world. And it showed that they had faith in you. That what oh, you yes. were bringing was authentic television. It was bringing a new voice and a youthful voice that they wanted to bring forth. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, they did a huge a uh, advertisement through the whole company. They they did a billboard campaign. Right. And my face was on it. So I got a call from these guys, the small studio where I was working. Hey, you, what are you putting your face on top of my office? What are you talking about? Right. You decide to put the billboard on top of my office. Right. And I was like this. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Just like that? And guess what? They put a billboard on top of the on their office. Did they really? They did. Wow, fantastic. The karma, you know? Oh, exactly <laughs> right. It is all karma. You know, it's, it's your life and is so great. And the rest is history, Dr. Levi. Uh, we, the show started making a huge numbers. We start bidding the main network, which is Univision, yes. at 6 p.m. And I did it for almost uh, 12 years. Just fantastic. Yeah. Now, let's also talk. I know we're running out of time. There's so much I want to talk to you about. Tell us about Testigo. And tell us about, about, your, about teledigital communication. I want to hear about your yes. own company also because that's yes, yes. so very important to you. The new company that I have, Dr. Levi, which is actually I want to give you my services in the near future. You want to do your talk show on television. Looking forward to doing it. My I friend, yes to that. as you can see, I have a lot of experience doing talk oh, shows. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, it's giving services to all new customers, yes. new people that believe that. This is the thing. Actually, uh, Los Angeles City gave me this opportunity to talk in different cities about advertisement because yes. when if let's say if you Dr. Levi you're gonna open your small shop about selling pills to lose weight or whatever right but then you got you got a loan right people the, the new the new uh, how do you call, how do you call it? the new the new uh, business people they put on the side right uh, how to advertise the, the the business right so I'm teaching them don't don't lose all your money and nice light, nice sofas, right. not uh, nice office. No. Do the basics. Bring, yeah, do the basics. Bring people to first of all and then when you start making money and then you can buy whatever you're going to buy. Absolutely. Don't don't buy until you have the capital to buy and don't buy so much that you're behind. There you are. So I'm <laughs> teaching them with a small budget. Right. I can put them on television, radio, print, billboards, anywhere. Right. Because I have the experience. I know how to do you it. You have the knowledge. You've been doing mm -hmm. this for how many years? This so is your life. Tw 25 years. Exactly. And not only that, Dr. Levi, I know a lot of tricks. Like yes. uh, if we buy a special package on the air, I can ask to the account executive from any TV station, hey, give me these bonuses, give me this plus, Absolutely. give me this, 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 and that. And yes. I can ask for more. If you wo if you go on yourself, you don't know oh, how to do it. It's very different. We don't know very how to different. manage through yes. that. Yes. And I know how to do It's a muddy river. Me is like a fish on, on no. I'm like a shark in the oh, water. Oh, you're hard, and I believe you. When are. is the time to defend my clients? I you know go with everything. It. So I'm doing that right now with tele digital media. Wow, I think it's great. That's my company. I'm well, helping. Now, new what's, what's your vision? I, I we have just a minute. Yeah. What, what's your vision in the next, you know, five years? Where do you see Jose Luis Gonzalez? Where do you see your media company going? 
Yes, I want to produce my own talk show. It's I want to put it nationwide. Yes. And I want syndicated. Yes, syndicated. And I want to have the rights on my show. And I want you to have a to have you on my show. And we're gonna do we'll be that there. interview. Absolutely. And I'm watching it, which is gonna be very possible very soon. Yes. yes. And of course, I want to give opportunity to all Latinos Absolutely. in the U.S. to yes. help them in the yes. entertainment business and help them because uh, it is good when you find somebody on the Starbucks on in the corner. And they give you the hand saying, Jose Luis, thank you very much. You give me the first opportunity on right. television. You can do it. And, 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 and now, see, I'm the executive producer on this TV show or this TV network. Absolutely. Yes. I, I just want to, I want to really thank Jose Luis Gonzalez oh, for being with you. us today. I mean, you're really an amazing man. Thank and, you. And you really show us the power of work ethic dreaming big and then making your life happen yes not just talking about no. it but doing it with action action and before we leave you right. need to give me the the best thing to to eat well oh so let me tell you so we're gonna i'm gonna talk to elise luis <laughs> jose luis off air but i do want to say this when it comes to eating properly remember this drink more water okay i have it more fruits nuts vegetables and grains okay minimize rice bread Pastas. Really? I love rice. I, uh, I do too. We can't do so it. So I can take it out? You got to take oh, it out. Or friend. if you do, maybe some brown rice. Okay. Minimize soy in your diet, sugar and salt, dairy, wheat and gluten, fruits, vegetables, things that are fresh. Minimize the things out of a bag, out of a box that are frozen, that are, that are just filled with dyes and preservatives. The goal here is your body, your skin, your teeth, your eyes, everything you want to reflect health, happiness, joy, prosperity, and of course, my favorite word, gratitude. I am so grateful today that we had Jose Luis Gonzalez here with us, an extraordinary man on an extraordinary mission to really bring authentic radio and television to everybody. So thank you again. No, thanks to you. Absolutely. My pleasure. Well, this is Dr. Levi. We're here today, March 9, 2015. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel. We have over 13,300 subscribers. Our goal, of course, is... And you have a new one. Oh, but thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, Jose <laughs> Luis. We're looking, we're looking forward to having 1.5 million within the next year or two. So I want to thank you for being a part of this platform, which is about you. Our goal here is to empower women, to empower minorities, to empower all human beings to feel better about themselves, to achieve your dreams, and to live in gratitude, and to be grateful for every day. Why? Because every day is a gift. This is Dr. Levi. I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me on YouTube. And again, this is your show, The Dr. Levi Show. Bye.